Hey, how's it going? It's Mac, and welcome to another unscripted video game chit chat. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about a new game that's coming out in early access called Forever Winter. Uh, this is from a small studio called Fun Dog Studios. And this game first got on my radar maybe a few weeks ago, sometime in August, when uh, they released their early access announcement trailer. And it got, uh, it got uh, how do you say, reacted to by Asmongold. And um, I'll talk about that in a bit, the early access stuff. But uh, the reason why this is on my radar, because it's scratching a, a few itches for me, personally. Uh, number one, it's a third-person shooter. Um, number two, it's got this very post-apocalyptic, grimdark style to it, which, as you can see from the cinematic trailer that I'm playing behind me, is quite evocative and uh, really effective. And if I had the sound on, you'd be able to hear their uh, music composition, which is also very evocative and um, just well composed. Uh, thirdly, I don't know if there's a third hook for me. It's co-op. Ooh, yeah, that's, that's a nasty kill. It's a uh, co-op. I believe it's up to four players. And it's going for this MMO light live service thing. I'm kind of unclear as to to what extent this is going to be a live service. It's going to be server-based. They have stressed in their uh, early access and I think on their blog, dev blog, that they want to uh, promote peer-to-peer -peer play so that if in the future when the game kind of uh, me it meets its like life cycle end, end of life cycle, and it's essentially abandoned by the developers, people can still continue to play it. It's not, there's not going to be a concern about maintaining servers for the uh, community. Uh, a lot of good things they're saying. So let me talk about the early access stuff because this is one of the rare times where I'm actually interested in picking up a game in early access. I'm not one to usually buy early access games, to be honest. I've done it maybe a couple times in the past. And usually I find myself not terribly engaged with a game if it's in such a rough state. And I, it's rare for me to stick with a game all the way from the very beginning of early access all the way to uh, their 1.0 uh, full release. This one seems a little different to me because I have to say the Asmongold video where he reacted to the early access announcement trailer. I gotta say, these developers are saying all the right things. They're really tapping into the zeitgeist of the uh, a modern gaming landscape, I guess you could say. Where if you spend as much time as I do on YouTube, on YouTube, then you have this sense of like this general malaise or discontent with AAA gaming right now. I don't, personally, I don't feel that myself. I feel like na there's never a better time to be a gamer than it is right now, whereas the access to games is just unparalleled. If you want a AAA game, you can find a AAA game. If you want to find indie games, there's a, there's a, a legion of indie games to, to get into, and there's even stuff in between. Now, the rise of AA is also great to see lately. So there... Um, I, I think it's a great time to be a gamer. I don't feel that cynicism with the modern gaming as some people do. And definitely that's not the narrative that's being really pushed uh, on YouTube and the algorithm. What I see a lot of times is just like this. Uh, why, why, why can't we get back to the good old days of gaming? Whatever the good old days may be, it all depends on who the content creator is, how old they are, which generation they, they spent their formative years in, right? Anyway, slight tangent. Let me actually uh, get to the early access trailer here. So, 
this trailer that's playing right now, this was the video that Asmund Gold reacted to. They're saying all the right things. They're saying that, hey, we want to get into early access and get feedback from our community as early as possible. Uh, we don't want to do microtransactions. We don't believe in nickel and diming our, our customers. Uh, we're going to be very transparent. They're, they're just a huge list of like, you know, if you made a list yourself as a game developer, game developer about what should I say to, uh, to uh, appease my potential customers, it's like, this is like the greatest hits of like the right things to say. They're saying all the right things. Now, that's the talk. Now, it's time to see the walk. The walk is going to be next week, uh, September 24th, when this game goes in early access on Steam. I believe it's only available on PC Steam right now. And uh, I was excited after seeing this trailer, after seeing the Asmongold video. Uh, I was definitely hyped. It's got that... It's the atmosphere, it's got atmosphere to burn. It's got a third person camera, which I, I do tend to favor nowadays, as opposed to just everything being in first person with with a few exceptions. And I do like the idea of a co-op shooter. That's not an MMO. That's not something like Destiny. That's very more immersive and then uh um the fact that it's a survival game, I didn't mention this, it is got heavy elements of survival gameplay. And they even said horror. So the idea, the concept here is that you're in this post-apocalyptic world, you play as a scavenger, and you have a home base underground where you live with other scavengers. And you're supposed to go up to the surface every now and then to get supplies for survival. And on the surface, you have... I believe, like, two major warring factions. I don't know what the backstory is between, like, these factions, but, you, you know, in the trailers, they've shown large mechs that, um, that are kind of like your traditional... They're like a twist on your, or your traditional, like, mech warrior type big robots, big stompy robots, but there is, like, something sinister behind them, too. I don't know, in the previous trailer a few minutes ago, you saw one of these robots dumping out these like almost like these robotic zombies that start tearing people apart. So that's really cool. Just the general vibe. It's just so dark and grim. Um, and then in, uh, I think I showed this earlier, but the, you also have these like attack on Titan style giants, right? They're like humanoid, large humanoid creatures that just, grab onto players and I get I would assume they just eat them alive so you have these yeah, yeah here we go here we go you have like that's straight up straight out of attack on Titan so <laughs> those are not friendlies I assume so you're just a scavenger trying to get by in this very hostile very grim world and uh yeah I mean all the surface elements are there to make a very intriguing action shooter it's got maybe not all out action it's definitely slower pace now i think this is where i'm getting tripped up about this game because just a few days ago um i think somebody i don't the name of the channel is enfant terrible they had uh they posted a like a 40 minute video of early access gameplay and i think i'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to that right now actually if you can just get that going here okay yeah so now we're looking at gameplay from enfant terrible and um i didn't watch the whole thing but i did skip around quite a bit and what has me sort of hesitant about this game at least for me is that there's a whole lot of downtime like I would just say downtime where it's a lot of sneaking around, a lot of skulking around these beautiful, devastated wastelands, these really awesome environments. And you can do it alone or with co-op partners. But what sort of bothered me was that the amount of time that you just spend sneaking around 
once in a while stopping to loot loot stuff off the ground, off corpses, and sneak around some more. When they actually did engage in combat, it didn't look especially fun or interesting. Um, the players always seemed extremely underpowered. Combat seemed like something you'd want to avoid at all costs because you're so vulnerable and under-equipped. That's sure to change as you play more of the game and you advance and you become more powerful, all that sort of stuff. I'm sure there's going to be a progression system. Uh, but what they showed here was like two, two survival, where it's like, yeah. Another thing was when you start aiming down sights, it would the camera would transition from third person behind the shoulder to uh, uh, first person, like aiming down sights, like in Call of Duty or what have you. I usually don't like when games do that sort of transition. Uh, we've seen it done in games like Rainbow Six before. Rainbow Six Vegas, one of my all-time favorite games of all time. Rainbow Six Vegas 1 and 2. Awesome games. Sorry. Sorry for the clap. Um, but yeah, there's very few games. I think, yeah, a lot of Ubisoft games have done that with the varying uh, levels of success. And, you know, if you're not dialed in to this sh if the shooting gameplay is not really dialed in and, and tight i'm not sure about that transition of cameras uh, it's going to be more jarring than anything it seems it didn't look good in in this gameplay footage I'll, I'll give it that much so i do have some reservations about that um and as you can see here it's just like large swathes of just time just snaking around crouching moving around very slowly and that's kind of cool like there's a lot of tension to be had here in uh building up such a hostile environment and really emphasizing the fact that you are so vulnerable and you cannot just go around willy-nilly um firing off your guns and drawing attention to yourself because you that will get you killed very quickly. Um, so it's not power fantasy, that's for sure. So if that's the kind of game that you're looking for and that I'm looking for, that's probably not going to be my cup of tea. But I'm still so intrigued by it. But the game has be, the early access game has turned into like a day one, give it a download, to uh, maybe a day two or day three wait and see. I'm probably going to wait to see uh, other content creators hop on like the ravenous monsters that they are and start uh, putting the early access through its paces for a couple, at least a couple days. And then I'll, I'll decide for myself if I want to jump in. It's not a very high asking price. That's another thing that the uh, developers emphasized in their, in their sales pitch was that they wanted to keep the cost of the game low. I believe it's only $25, $27 US. So for us Canadians with our funny money, it's going to be like, you know, the low 30s, 30 bucks, a little bit over 30 bucks, which is not too bad. Uh, assuming that these developers are true to the word, they're going to um, really be transparent with their development. They're going to stick with this project. They're not going to abandon it. Are the first signs of trouble, the first signs of like really negative feedback, because they will get, they're sure to get a ton of feedback, um, especially with the way they've kind of hyped up the game themselves and kind of hyped up how they're going to conduct themselves and conduct their business practices. So uh, I, I, I for sure expect them to come under a lot of scrutiny, but assuming that they deliver and they stick to the guns this could be a very cool game to evolve with and that's 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 definitely an appeal to just get into a new game on the ground floor uh, even though it may be a steep learning curve um, there's going to be a lot of reward to just becoming a veteran of a game that is initially very uh, hostile and difficult for newcomers but then since you've been playing for the beginning it's going to be uh, 
you're going to be able to like show your stuff and to see um, the game from its humble beginnings to what it may eventually become, like a very popular, uh, satisfying, engaging um, multiplayer game. Now, uh, the, whole, the whole multiplayer stuff, I'm still very fuzzy on like how persistent this game world is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be entirely instanced, if there's going to be uh, multiplayer hub areas where you can see other players and trade with them. And then when you go off into missions, those are going to be instanced. That would seem to be the logical way for them to structure things. But as of yet, details are scant. I haven't done a terrible amount of research into it. I'm just going off a few of the trailers that they've shown, Asmongold's video, and um, the gameplay, the early access gameplay video that you're seeing here from Enfant Terrible. So just getting this out on the, on the, on the table as something that I do want to consider for the channel here. I want to cover this game if it, if it strikes my fancy. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Next week is going to be very interesting when the game releases to EA, that'd be on my calendar. Yeah, the 24th is on Tuesday. So uh, we're about a week away. A little over a week. So yeah, that's all I wanted to uh, cover for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you haven't already, do consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, give a thumbs up to this video if you found it useful. And I'd like to know what you are thinking about the forever winter, uh, whether uh, it's something that you're going to hop on day one for early access or you're just going to watch from the sidelines and see how things play out, maybe wait for a full release before pulling the trigger on this game. But it looks intriguing, doesn't it? But that's it for me. Thank you, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all in the uh, next video. Bye for now.